First, the four seam fastball. My first seam fastball is this. Okay. So your fingers are right on the seams right there. Are you, do you squeeze hard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about the two seam fastball? My two seam fastball is like this. Okay. All right. And now your slider. My slider. Okay, so on, on the slider, where is the pressure? On, on, on this finger? Yeah, on the middle this finger, finger? This finger. Do you pull down with mm -hmm. that? Okay, that's a good slider too. I've seen it. And how about your changeup? Oh, my best pitch. Like this. Right. Okay. Two and two to count. Deuce is wild. The 2 2 pitch is a swing and a miss. Oh, 97. A wave and a miss, triple digits. And he struck him out. Filthy sinker. A weak wave and a miss. On the outside corner. Hanson strikes out swinging. Got him. Guerrero strikes out. Look at the movement on that pitch. Well, struck him out swinging. And the fist pump to go with it. Talk about Castillo. Uh, his stuff is like electric, and it looks so easy when he's out there throwing. It is. It's. I mean, it's some of the easiest 97, 98, 99 that, that you're going to see. Uh, I think the last pitch he threw of the game was 99. And, I mean, for a guy that's not very big, to be able to get that out of his body, I mean, it's, it's extremely impressive. And like you said, his stuff is electric. I mean, good breaking ball, an excellent changeup, and, and the, obviously 97, 98. I think in his bullpens, he's definitely been working on kind of running that ball to the arm side of the plate. And when he can do that with regularity, I think he's going to be uh, something special. Luis Castillo, a.k.a. La Piedra, or The Rock, is a starting pitcher for the Seattle Mariners. Later in this video, we'll hear from Castillo on exactly how he got that nickname. Luis was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, where he idolized and watched fellow Dominican Republic starting pitcher Pedro Martinez. And as we'll see later in this video, it seems as though he might have built his pitching style around Pedro. Luis was signed as an international free agent by the San Francisco Giants back in 2011. Until in December of 2014, he was traded alongside Kendry Flores for third baseman Casey McGee. McGee was the Giants starting third baseman to begin the year, but after continued struggle, he would be DFA twice by the Giants and would appear in only 49 games for the Giants batting 213. During this time, in 2015, the Marlins worked to transition Castillo from a relief pitcher into a starting pitcher. In July of 2016, the Marlins would then trade Castillo along with Jared Cozart, Josh Naylor, and Carter Capps to the San Diego Padres in exchange for Andrew Kashner, Colin Ray, and Tehran Guerrero. Colin Ray would suffer an injury on his first outing for the Marlins, and in a very interesting move, after this injury, the Padres traded Luis Castillo back to the Marlins in exchange for Colin Ray. Typically during a trade, teams will exchange medical information and they might do their own exam themselves. But during this trade, the Marlins felt that they were sent an injured player and they were able to convince the Padres to take him back, although this is not common. And what adds another layer to this is that two months earlier, the Padres traded away Fernando Rodney in exchange for Chris Paddock. Paddock would make three starts for the Padres at the high A level before he would need Tommy John surgery. So the Padres got the short end of the stick twice in two months in trades with the Marlins, and the Marlins got a second opportunity at developing future ace Luis Castillo. Castillo would be named the Marlins 2016 Minor League Pitcher of the Year, and during the following offseason, they would decide to trade him along with Austin Bryce and Isaiah White to the Cincinnati Reds in exchange for Dan Straley. Straley would pitch two seasons for the Marlins before being released in 2019. So to recap Castillo's trade history so far, he started with the Giants in 2011, was traded to the Marlins in 2014, traded to the Padres in 2016, three days later traded back to the Marlins, and then in 2017 traded to the Reds. And as we'll get into in a bit, he was then traded to the Mariners in 2022. Castillo started 2017 in AA with a 2.58 ERA through 14 starts. Look at a miss by Iskandarian and down on strikes he goes. Two more Ks for the right-hander Castillo. Before on June 23rd, 2017, he would make his MLB debut. And a strikeout on that breaking ball down and away. First major league out recorded by Castillo. Mi debut que yo siempre he esperado toda mi vida. 
Yeah, I mean, thanks God, this is a dream came true tonight. This I was waiting for that moment since the first time that I pitched in professional baseball. Castillo would finish his rookie year pitching 89 and a third innings with 98 strikeouts, a 3.12 ERA, and a 1.05 whip. Castillo's sophomore year would be a bit of a learning experience as he pitched to a 4.3 ERA with a 1.22 whip and 165 strikeouts in 169 and two-thirds innings. And I call it a learning experience because, well, this was his worst year and he was still just below league average in ERA. Boy, has he done that a whole bunch today. Ninth strikeout for the right-hander. 2019 would be Castillo's breakout year, as he would finish with 226 strikeouts, a 3.4 ERA, and a 1.143 whip over 190 and two-thirds innings. He would also make his first career All-Star game, and he would finish second in the MLB with ground ball rate at 55.2%. An adjustment he made going into 2019 was that he started throwing his changeup more than any other pitch. He threw his changeup about 33% of the time, his four-seam fastball 30%, that sinker about 21%, and the slider just 17%. Bringing back the comparison to Pedro Martinez, both Pedro and Luis throw from a three-quarter arm slot, and they both have a great fastball with a devastating changeup. Oh, my favorite, Pedro Martinez. I remember meeting this kid, and he came over, and, and he says, oh my God, you Pedro, I, I play for the Cincinnati Reds. And I'm, I'm like, yes, I know. I know who you are, kid. And he goes, <laughs> ah, can you wait a minute? And he ran to his car and he goes, ah, how do I slow down my change up a little bit more? He brought a ball from his car and asked me to teach him how to slow down his change up a little bit. And since then we became friends. So we text a lot. I, I'm always looking on to see how he's doing. He was literally fastball change up all the time. Fastball change up. And he's been able to do an outstanding job as he matured in front of, in front of our eyes. Basically, fastball change up. And then we saw him in, in, in the All-Star game. And all of a sudden I'm seeing a little change on this kid. And he's starting to develop a little slider. And as, as we have been seeing the <laughs> last... That, I mean, that's... that's <laughs> wow. That's, that's dirty. That's what that That's was. dirty. Imagine, this kid is going to be probably somewhere around 250 strikeouts. The awareness of the changeup, a lot of those guys are not expecting that slider to work so much. Right. And when he flips it over, it's like lethal to anybody. During the shortened 2020 season, he kept his pitch usage the same as the year before and finished with 89 strikeouts in 70 innings, a 3.21 ERA, a 1.229 whip, and again placed second in the MLB in ground ball rate, this time at 58.4%. Yeah. 2021 was much of the same. This year, he pitched 187 in two-thirds innings, finished with 192 strikeouts, a 3.4 ERA, a 1.364 whip, and this year he was first in the MLB in ground ball rate at 56.6%. Oh, a bouncer in Votto. In general, the higher of a ground ball rate a pitcher has, the better, as the more balls that are hit on the ground means that there's less hit in the air, and the fewer balls hit in the air means fewer home runs and fewer runs scored. This remains true whether or not the shift is banned, which next year the shift is banned, so good results should come if he continues this trend of having a high ground ball rate. Heading into the 2022 season, Castillo made a bit of an adjustment regarding his pitch usage. Instead of favoring that changeup, he now was throwing his four-seam fastball more than any pitch, his sinker second, changeup third, and slider fourth. It makes it tough on a batter when you have four pitches that you throw about evenly. He has weapons to every quadrant. He's got 98 four-seamer away. He's got filthy, dirty change-up at 89 miles an hour. He's got 97 away. He's got filthy change-up to the left-hander. He's got slider change-up. Cha right on right change-up is just disgusting. You don't see that as a right-handed hitter. And run that back for me. Franchi Cordero, he's standing on the third base side. He is driving that heater in right there at 97 miles an hour. Kevin Lewecki, top of the zone. Punch. This guy is my worst nightmare. We talk about it all the time. I was a guy who liked the ball to stay on one plane. Four seamers, I didn't care if you threw it 200 miles an hour. I felt like I could get to it. Breaking ball, change up because they kind of all stayed on the same plane. The guys who gave me nightmares, sinker, slider guys, okay? Made prop and the split. So let's dive in. He would be my nightmare. First thing I noticed, pause. My only chance too would be if he would be standing on that first base side of the mound 
and I could actually see it, the sinker kind of crossing home plate this way. But when these guys present themselves like Luis on the third base side, I almost feel like it moves the plate on me. So now he's all on top of me, run this. <laughs> and I have to decide where the black of the inside is. Look at that two-seamer, because that's exactly what you see coming out of his hand. You're like, okay, that's a strike, strike. It looks like it's gonna be a strike, and it sinks up under your hands, and you are dead. But I think he's a guy that at the trade deadline, He's going to change somebody's season. He really will. Just a couple days before the 2022 MLB trade deadline, Luis Castillo was traded to the Seattle Mariners in exchange for Seattle's number one, three, and five overall prospects in Noel V. Marte, Edwin Arroyo, Levi Stout, and then also Andrew Moore. DePoto and Hollander were looking to better this team on the brink of a playoff push, and that they did. Castillo's first start as a Mariner would come against the New York Yankees, who were one of the other teams that were fighting to get Castillo at the deadline. He would make them regret it right off the bat as he went six and two thirds innings with eight strikeouts and the Mariners got the win in the Bronx that day. As Donaldson goes down on strikes. His next start would be his home debut, again coming against the Yankees. And I just had to see it in person, so I drove up to Seattle on a Tuesday and got some footage. that slider oh, 97 top shelf two and he struck him out filthy sinker too hard a weak wave and a miss call it feeble to show just how hard it is to hit a baseball check out the side by side the exact same arm angle exact same release point on the left is a sinker coming in at about 98 miles an hour. On the right is a circle change coming in in the high 80s or low 90s. The sinker starts above the strike zone and comes down at the last moment, while the circle change starts in the zone and then dives out at the end. No wonder why in baseball, if you're getting a hit just 30% of the time, you're probably an all-star. Castillo would finish his home debut in the battle against Garrett Cole, pitching eight innings with seven strikeouts, two walks, and no runs. The Mariners won 1-0 in 13 innings. Castillo would finish the rest of the year strong, and in 2022, he ended up going 150 and one-thirds innings with 167 strikeouts, a 2.99 ERA, and a whip of just 1.084. And Castillo at times looked purely dominant. He gets him swinging after the slider. Then in September, just a month after it was announced that Julio Rodriguez signed a massive extension, Luis Castillo was signed to a five-year, $108 million contract extension, which lasts through 2027, plus a vesting option in 2028. There's also an interesting $5 million club option in 2028, where if Luis misses at least 130 days due to getting Tommy John surgery anywhere from 2025 through 2027, then the Mariners would get access to a $5 million club option for 2028. During his press conference, we got a little insight on how he got his nickname, La Piedra. <laughs> so there's two stories. One of them was um, when my mom was about to give birth to me, my dad was at work. So when he came home and found my mom on the floor, he rushed to get a car. That was where my grandma met us and we rushed to the hospital. And every time that my grandma had, or I'm sorry, my mom had a contraction, my grandma put a rock on top of my mom's head to help Rich. reduce the pain. I don't know where that comes from. It was just kind of, you know, it just kind of did that. La, la segunda historia so the second part is when I got traded to Cincinnati, I was in the bullpen. And obviously I was the new guy, so I kind of wanted to show everybody my stuff. So I was in the bullpen, you know, throwing 95, 97, as hard as I can. So one of the guys there told me, you're throwing rocks out here, you know? And when we went back in the clubhouse, he just asked me, how do you throw, you know, you're throwing rocks out there, how do you do it? So when I was bumped up to the majors, he was the first one to greet me there, and he said, bienvenido a la piedra. Castillo was a rock in the Mariners' rotation the second half of the year, and also into the playoffs as the Mariners broke their 21-year playoff drought. 
Through his first six seasons, Luis holds a 3.59 ERA, a 1.196 whip, and a 9.8 K per nine, which makes for a 125 ERA plus, meaning his ERA is about 25% better than the average pitcher. 98 mile an hour fastball. I would not be surprised one bit if Luis Castillo adds some hardware to his shelf over these next five years with the Mariners. Strikes out the side. We'll end with a pretty awesome story from Jerry Depoto about Luis Castillo. If you haven't watched the Adam Ray podcast with Jerry Depoto on there, go check it out. But during the last episode, Jerry told a story about how in recent years, after each win for the Mariners, the coaching staff, some of the owners, the general manager would all meet up together and do a fireball shot. And then Luis Castillo joined the team. You know, if, if we, we, we win the game. It was Luis Castillo's debut wow. with, the, with the Mariners. Yes. And, uh, and afterward, we're doing the, the, the fireball shot. And, and The Rock happens to walk in and he sees, like this is happening in the coach's room, and he sees it in the coach's room. He just thought it was the coolest thing. And he said, come on, I want to do it. And so <laughs> he, he takes the little, the little thimble and he starts jumping. So from that point on, it became a celebration with the coaches and the, the support group and Luis Castillo. And, and he would come in and stand in the middle of the group. And, and on, you know, the, the way we used to start it, was Scott would come in and make a toast to that game, whatever happened in that game, mm. you know. And once once the the Rock started to take part, Scott would do his toast, and it was slightly less entertaining than it was at home plate sure. after we clinched. But but uh, he would go through his his presentation, you know, guys, that was a hell of a win, and he'd tell you why, and you know. And then once we got Castillo, you knew it was time for the for the the drink. He'd come in and go. <laughs> You know, and then everybody would start to the, the, the take their shot, their their That's shot, and start amazing. jumping up and down. Thank you for watching, and make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll put a link on the right side of the screen to another video you might like. All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it. Stop it.